Hi everybody, it's Sarah Marie Thompson from wildandcreative.com and this is a wild and creative masterclass, fun ways to increase your personal power and everyday magic. And today I have with me Limomi Kelly Cooley, I hope I said that right, and she is an intuitive soul alignment coach. And she helps soul-driven women to up-level with ease in an epic time by teaching them how to align their soul's divine their soul's divine soul blueprints to manifest whatever they desire and clearing their visible soul level blocks to success using the Akashic records. So that is a lot of different things, but it's really super exciting. I know we're going to have an awesome conversation today, but uh, Limomi, what else can you tell us about yourself? Because you seem like a very, very interesting person. Well, thank you for having me. Like I'm always excited to share you know, stories and insights and, you know, using your intuitive intuition, because I believe when you really are in alignment and using, you know, your right brain, right, the parts of ourselves that sometimes we don't trust and allow, um, it's actually the key to success. I have found that when I started my business, um, I just had this one idea. If you know what, like, your soul's gifts are, I, I believe that you can ultimately be successful if we know what you are at soul level. So I took that idea and I ran with it. And um, it, I launched like one big webinar, basically changed my life. <laughs> and um, that took me on a journey to you know, talk about like this, about how to be in alignment to your soul. So but originally when um, I was actually a psychic monk for 10 years from the age of 21. So it's kind of like this Mother Teresa. I made millions. I helped millions um, teaching yoga, uh, meditation, uh, also ran some metaphysical storefronts. So I kind of have an idea of like how to create a business, you know, from scratch <laughs> and then, you know, moving it on towards online and offline. So from that, like I've learned that, Really, if you are in alignment with your soul, you can, you can absolutely create anything you want. But if you aren't in alignment to your own soul's gifts, it's going to feel really, really hard and you're going to end up in an unaligned path. So when I was, when I was a monk, um, a psychic monk, I was doing you know, what I thought my purpose was. But uh, being in the group, I noticed that there was just stuff that wasn't aligned to me. And so when I realized that I was living in an unaligned path, I left my title, my status, everything behind and married my soulmate, retired my husband from his nine to five, actually just one month after launching my business in January 2016. And now I'm the sole breadwinner of my family. So my whole story of like being an unaligned path, right, it, it led me to like go forward and think about, well, how can I help more soulful entrepreneurs to be the more an embodiment of source, to be the more in a soul line leadership and a soul line business. So that's kind of what I've been doing since. Awesome. Well, I I'm really want to talk to you about like alignment, especially today. So I figured like maybe we should just kind of dive into that first. So you um, said that you really went from a misaligned path into alignment for yourself. And you kind of touched a little bit on that. But what were those kind of like aha moments or like those steps or what happened there like that you can kind of shed light on for other people that are totally in the same spot that they feel, right? They feel maybe some things are going really well for them. Maybe they're doing what they love to do, but yet there's a lot of resistance in other places of their life. You know, maybe it is the income or maybe it is um whatever it whatever right so yeah so i've actually found that every soul has a very particular primary or secondary energy and so when you align to your primary one we actually have three kinds of gifts the primary one is the one that your soul creates content it's it's where you feel the most flow I'm and ready. where you feel the most like presence and people just you know, that's where you feel abundant. That's where everything flows for you. Okay. But most of the time people are, are getting alignment to their second or their third gift. And what I was doing, I was aligning to my third gift, which was all about creation. And usually those who create like storefronts or, you know, like an offline type of business where you're kind of like a CEO of your company, right? Like you're managing people and all that kind of stuff. 
when you're in that kind of creation, some people that are really good at it, like I was really good at it. I made millions of dollars out, out of it, right? But even though you make money, you are successful and known what in your industry and what you do, um, it doesn't always mean that you are in alignment. It actually has to do with how connected you are to source and your soul. Hmm. So when I was connected to creation, I'm very creative. I do all kinds of stuff creatively. And it, it, it was always like fun because, you know, it's about creating experiences for people, right? So, but that was my third gift. When I aligned to my second gift, which is um, power, I'm very good at leading people, helping them to align to like their leadership. And when I aligned to that, it was also very good because a lot of people were like, woohoo, like let's, let's get to know this like amazing lady here, right? And, you know, stepping into my leadership that way. And it was, it was good too, but it always felt like it was like hard work. So how you know you're not in alignment a lot of times is because like it's just, it takes longer to create something or it feels like it's just harder to do. Mm -hmm. So whenever I was running those yoga businesses and the storefronts and it was felt hard work. Like I really literally from nine to five or even 12 hours a day, you know, I made a lot of money, but the amount that I actually make was not as much as I make now. I make 10 times more money and more abundance flow to me much more easily because I'm aligning to my energy, which is love. So is the second and the third um, alignment stages, like do they make up the first or is the first like a whole different thing? Well, the first is a, it's aligning to your heart. Okay. What, your, what you are made of at soul level. So everybody has usually eight kinds of energies and that's like compassion, love, truth, wisdom, order, um, creation, I can just think of the top of my head. Um, and all of those, we all have it. But we we'll usually have, like I said, the first, second, and third. And depending on how you do it in order, right, when you align to the first, second, and third, not the third, second, first, or second, third, <laughs> first, mm -hmm. right? Like when you're aligning to the wrong one, it feels harder. Mm -hmm. But if you align to the heart chakra, which is originally what you made up at soul level, that's where everything will come into flow and that's what alignment will feel like so okay. how so how do you in your coaching mentorship business how do you help somebody find out like what their first initial one is because i think a lot of people probably know what their third one is you know what i mean like they, they can probably somehow figure it out and like get into that right um the power one the second one i'm sure that a lot of people struggle with that right because you know there's so many emotions like guilt uh whatever that go around with that one i'm assuming that you might find right and so the first one obviously is that's the most the the flow and the heart centered one that's the most important but it's still the idea of it's still very vague right so i'm sure someone's like this sounds so amazing but how do i figure out what my first one is? <laughs> Yeah, so that's why um, I use the Akashic Records as my tool because the Akashic Records is where everything that exists that, you know, is very accurate information. So when you go into the person's Akashic Records, I can see what their primary, their second, and their third. And so, like I said, we have eight kinds of energies. So you just need to know which one comes first. Mm -hmm. So when you, you can actually also, <clears throat> sorry, um, get into your own Akashic Records. And once you do that, it's like, a light bulb and a feeling like starts to flow through and you don't feel like you have, you're trying so hard. So the main one, you usually can find it through taking action towards that desire. So like when I figured out that my energy was love, I was at first I was surprised because I was like, I am creative. I know I'm creative. I'm a creative type. Right. And so I had to like, change my mindset that's the first part so you have to change your mindset that actually you're aligning to the wrong one and you have to like relearn mm -hmm. not to be in that third or the second gift and as soon as you go into the heart chakra and you're going to know your heart is going to say like i'm more love i am more order i am more creation i am more power i am more um truth i'm more wisdom like there's you can see it through your values so usually the best thing to do is like write out like 10 different 
10 different things that, that you value. And you can actually see like, oh, I value, you know, connection and love and creation. And you're going to see which one you value the most. And usually that's the one that's your main one. Hmm. So can you give us an example like of like obviously like an unknown person that you've worked with kind of like what their first second third one was that you figured out for them like through the Akashic Records so that we can just like have like a, an idea. Like how do I find it you mean? No but like what like what their first one ended up being like what their second you know what I mean like just like maybe. Oh something. okay like how do you do that? Like, yeah. how, okay so when I go into Akashic Records I look up the three. Then the first one, like, for example, um, I can actually give an example of my OBM. She's a, my online business manager. Okay. Because <laughs> she can say I can use her <laughs> in anything. Okay. Um, her main gift is order. So, you know, an OBM or a VA, a virtual assistant, they're really good at technology. They're good at, like, putting pieces together, a strategy and all of that. That's really what order is. So her main gift is order. Mm-hmm. Then her um, second gift is power. Power, of course, it's like empowering people to take inspired action, to like, you know, go towards their goals and stepping into their leadership. Usually that's what divine like power people are like. Mm-hmm. Then, you, then her third gift was self-expression. So essentially when you do from the f- first to the third, what she does at soul level is she first creates the order for people. Like, Like she sees everything as a system in a very systematic way, put things into like strategic action, like create like everything on one piece of paper, like a plan. And then when she does it, she talks to them and then she empowers them to kind of see like, well, what is it that they're not confident about that they they need to be inspired and empowered to do? As soon as she does that, then they themselves in in transformation by talking to her, they get into their own self-expression. Like they get to know their originality, their original voice, what they really, really, truly want to say. So when you go in this order, then she's in alignment. But, right. some, but, but when she first started with me, she was doing the opposite. She was like, oh, what is it that, you know, you truly want to talk about and say? And, and she's trying to figure out the person from the other way around, from the third, second, the first. And when she starts doing that, it's like she's in the outcome. And she's trying to figure out what the heck is the outcome for that person. And it feels really hard and it's like working backwards. And that's not really aligned to her because she's about that process, right? Like how can you go from, I don't know, you know, what I have like this chaotic mess. How can I make this, you know, in in a strategic way? How can I empower them? And then I help them to find what their self-expression is, right? So it makes a lot of sense, really. Like it's, it's interesting the way that you're laying it out because, I know, especially like me being a really creative person and many other creative people out there were like, no, creativity is like our number one. Like, that's it. You know, like we're we're almost kind of like one track minded, like in a sense, like we have obviously the desire to help people and like spread light and love to the world. But are we doing it in the right formula? You know, like, so it, it does make sense. So it's really, really interesting. So I'd be actually really interested to see what <laughs> what I'm doing so maybe I will uh, contact you after this call <laughs> um thank you for laying that out um now for people that obviously um, alignment is one thing but being really uh in tune with your intuition and everyone has psychic gifts right a lot of people obviously don't want to even kind of go there because they're overwhelmed with the idea of it right but is there some kind of tips and techniques that you can give that people can just kind of like start inching into more of their using more of their psychic gifts yeah that's actually so the first part that you need to do is align to the main gift the what you know that you are at soul level and you start acting from the heart and you're in your heart creation not from your head Mm -hmm. like don't manifest things from the head but really really truly from the heart then that next level is expanding it, right? Expanding your manifestations, being super clear on what I de- my soul truly desires, and then expanding that even further. What is my intu- what is my intuition? What is my like gifts from that? And what I have found there's actually people have like a certain kind of archetype, mm. a higher psychic gifts archetype. So, like for example, my my soul as love, my main gift is love. Every type of there's eight, right? Every type. They all have a very particular psychic gift. And so when you start to align to that part of your archetype, like mine is about um, 
It's like a diva, you know, the energy of diva. As you can see, I'm very <laughs> flamboyant. <laughs> um, and also when I can connect with my magician, right? Okay. When I'm, I'm very magical, like I create magic everywhere. And when I align to that part, it's like everything opens up and, and um, I'm able to hold bigger space for people. Okay. So align to your higher gifts and this archetype, for example, right? Um, and also I'm a healer, right? So those main archetypes is my type of thing. So what I do is I do clearing work. I do healing work. I, you know, channel. It's all aligned to my higher psychic gifts. You see? If yeah. you were power, your energy would probably be really more like a goddess, mm -hmm. very like a leader, you know, a very powerful type of energy. So when you align to that, then, then you can think of all the different ways. Are you going to be more clairvoyant, more clairaudient, more claircognizant? You know, which of the, the clairs are you? Because when you align to those particular ones, you will see that more people flock to you rather than the other gifts. Like let's say your power where you're supposed to be talking, you're very inspirational, right? And you're, mm -hmm. and you're a very good writer and you speak a lot. But then you go and do massage therapy where you don't even talk at all, mm -hmm. right? Like it doesn't make any sense. Right. So is, okay. So when you teach people to kind of like be more alignment with their psychic gifts too, it's kind of like still part of the process of finding out your, your one, two, three blueprint, right? Like it's kind of like, like a secondary part of it, right? Cause you still need to know really what your most powerful way of reaching people is, right? Like that's, that's still what you need to know. Um, have you ever had anybody that you've worked with and you've told them what, you know, their one, two, three soul blueprint is and they've been kind of like, oh, like, and not really know like what to do with that or feel unaligned with it at first, right? Because I think that some people probably have so many ideas of what their identity is, right? And then they're kind of shocked. I'm just assuming, right? So has that ever happened? Oh, yes. All the time. <laughs> It's always the first reaction because uh, you've been usually you're doing the most misaligned path because you think that the thing that is you, you usually have like a gift envy, for example, like a gift envy. You see somebody that's really good at what they do, so you're like, Oh, yeah, my gift must be that too. So then you start to align to that person's gifts, and then you realize, like, Oh my god, this is so hard. Why is it so hard? I'm doing like all of this work. That's how you know, because you're not getting money. You're not feeling really abundant in your relationships and all the other parts of your life areas. And then when you start to actually take action towards your main gift, which is what we do in, in my, all of my programs, I teach you how to go from like, okay, I know I'm misaligned. This doesn't feel right. I'm doing it wrong. I'm probably doing it backwards. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I unbackwards myself? <laughs> it's usually what they first tell me. And I'm like, just try it, try it, try to go towards your main gift. Mm -hmm. And then when they start doing it, they start telling me, oh, oh my gosh, like all this time I was doing it backwards, you know, like, and it is a process because you have to let go of these ideas and these identities of who you are. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what soul alignment is about. Yeah. And then you create a business alignment to you. So you cannot do the business alignment first. You got to actually do alignment to your soul first and what your main gift is. And then you go into what the business is an extension of your creation, right? Your divine business. So when people start to go in that direction, they're like, oh, that is what my business is supposed to be about. Why was I even doing massage when I was supposed to be like a speaker and a teacher and writer? And you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we think the tools first. Which, which, by the way, is our third gift. We think we do the tools first, and then we can do our main gift because it's so easy. Right. We don't have to work on it. And I think that there, you know, there's so much talk online, especially. And I feel because so many people are coming into some kind of power right now, and they're like, you know, I can make a business for myself. I don't have to be going to work every single day. I can take care of my family. You know, they're they're setting their sights so much higher. So there's so much, so many more entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial type people coming out of the woodwork. We're very creative people that might have been kind of like closed in and holding it in. So, but there's so much talk around being in aligned and being um, just happy and, and, and that feeling of ease and flow that 
it is kind of like how do those pieces get put together, which you have totally explained to us and make it make great sense. But it's 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 interesting, right? Because people say you need to feel good in order for you to be aligned. And then people are like, well, you need to um, be doing like your soul's path. Like, but it's so vague, right? And so there's all these little bits and pieces that people are like trying to put together. And, but really it's actually quite simple. And now you mentioned that you use the Akashic records to find out this information about people, but can you just kind of touch on what the Akashic records are? Cause I know some people probably will not know. Yeah, so the Akashic Records is actually, think of it kind of like a library or like the internet. It's literally where all information of all life, everything that exists, is like stuffed with information. It only like pretty much down, like gets information, that's it. And so it's like kind of like our um, higher fifth dimensional aspect where all that information about who you are at soul level, like everything you can think of, past, present, future, is all there. And so when you tap into it, and you need somebody who's really good at this because sometimes um, you can get people who say that they went in the Kashuk records, but the information is still unclear. Mm-hmm. When you get somebody who's really good at it, they've got like downloads of information. So when I go in your Kashuk records and I look up your blueprints, it takes me three hours to record everything about what you're at soul level. Oh. So that much information I can get when I tap into it. But if, I, if I'm in a state where I'm not really channeled into it, Mm-hmm. And I can get like misaligned information. Just Got it. Mm-hmm. So, and you have to be disciplined too. Cause it's just, it's like if you type in the word cat, right? Like there's so many kinds of cats. Like, what do you want to know about cats? Like the Kasha Records is like that. Like you have to ask like, well, black cats. Yeah. Kind of black cats, black and white stripes. I don't know. You know, yeah. like when you're really clear about what you want and what you intend to get in the information, then the information is, it's very, very clear. How um, long have you been uh, working with the Akashic Records? Actually, for the past, like, year. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's gen- but, generally new to you, but you probably caught on very quickly. Yeah, well, I, I went through the entire training <laughs> that you can think of about Akashic Records. And then um, I've been, you know, practicing it with all my clients because my I've only been in business for a year. Mm-hmm. But, because that work was so aligned to my main gift, mm-hmm. why I make millions now. Mm-hmm. But before that, when I was trying to be a yoga teacher and you know doing all these other things, right? That was it felt hard. Do you see how the difference is? Like mm-hmm. I make ten times more money and abundance than what I made before, and it was always hard work. I worked like long hours just to even get you know very clear. And I did readings and healings work, you know, just. In, you know, intuitively channeling and stuff. But I found that when I aligned to this work, that was when my abundance came through. Even though my abundance came through with, with the Akasha purpose, doesn't mean that it's going to be for, that, for you too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody has their own unique way that the soul expresses itself. And when you find kind of the different tools that just really, really align to you, you can tell that you are in alignment with it because how much money you make too. Mm-hmm. like the abundance is flowing for you if it's not then you're kind of just using the tools like how you just you know take a hammer out of your bag you know like it's not going to be a good hammer if you don't really know how to use it that's aligned to your gift and that's kind of how alignment is so back when you were doing you know you were you had your yoga studio or you had different storefronts you were saying that you did many different things i'm assuming that, that at the time each one of those ventures that you were working on you really enjoyed to some degree right and so that probably was before you kind of learned about this blueprint idea um i'm sure that it was confusing to you or frustrating right because you really enjoyed like these things that you were doing right as many people probably are right now they're doing something that they totally enjoy and love but they're feeling tired and doubtful and confused because it it isn't fully the piece the puzzle pieces aren't fully fitting together right Right. So what you usually feel is like something's missing. Mm-hmm. So when I was teaching the yoga and the, I was doing healing, you know, I was doing Reiki, I was doing like meditation, teaching people how to do healing martial arts, you know, like all the kind of things that I show things with my body. Because that's usually what creation is all about. 
um, and I was giving people experiences, you know, creating retreats and all kinds of stuff. And I did feel good. I absolutely did feel good. And I did make good money. But inside of myself, I felt like, why is this so hard? Mm -hmm. I was tired at the end of the day. But now when I go and I talk about the blueprints, I talk about the pain, <laughs> the pains of like, um, not knowing what you are at soul level. Now it's just like, I can talk about this all day. Yeah. You can throw any kind of topic about the soul and I can just like, we're in a jam fest. <laughs> <laughs> But with the yoga, it always felt like I'm tired at the end of the day. And I was always, always feels like, I don't know if I want to do this again. Mm -hmm. At some point, it got like that because I was teaching like four to five classes a day, including workshops, you know, and, and, you know, teaching people how to do yoga and things like that. So it's really about like, it has to be aligned to, to your main gift because that was aligned to my third gift. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah, there's, and there's so many individuals out there, right, that are, I, I, I want to use the term like light workers again, because I feel that that's going to resonate with a lot of people. Um, but people that are very creative, um, heart centered light workers that go into fields such as, um, you know, healings or Reiki or what have you, right? So there's kind of like, I, I'm going to lump them together in that sense, but that's probably not the best soul aligned career for so many of them, right? Because that's a way for them to help others and express themselves and heal others. However, there's, there's probably so many more um, better fitted careers for them, right? That they can still do that with that, you know, finding out that this blueprint is going to help them really be like, okay, like, that's what I should be doing, right? So awesome. Well, thank you so much for going over that because it's, it really makes sense. I know it's going to hit like a light bulb for a lot of people, but I've got a couple more questions for you before we go. Um, in regards to abundance, how do you really feel that you are an abundance magnet? Or maybe you've already answered that with being aligned. <laughs> yeah, when you align to your main gift, like everything feels abundant. So because I align to my energy of love, Say maybe your energy is power and power is all about like, you know, empowering people, inspiring people. If that was your energy, mm -hmm. my energy is love. I'm all about love and connection. So the more I align to the energetic and with intention, just the ener energetics of those particular energies of whatever your, your main gift is, and you start to take action towards that, you're going to see you manifest amazing things like people, places, things, they just come towards you. So that's what I do every day, basically, is I, I look at what, what I can do to be in my own love energy. And that essentially, that's about being in self-love. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about something. Okay, so, you know, everybody's vibrating at different frequencies and different levels because of what they're embodying and their intention, all of that. So when someone is not totally in alignment, right, and they're kind of like their their number one isn't isn't computing, um, is it possible that like in their business, say they're they're like you know they're working a business and um, they're just not on the right path? Is it possible that their frequency, like the people, just can't see them? You know what I mean? Like they can't even like. Did you get what I'm saying? <laughs> trying to explain myself, but like the, the other, their, their desired clients or their desired um, customers, like cannot see their, their vibration. Does that make sense? I think I know what you mean. When you align to like your other gifts, like your third or your second gift, your frequency is not very clear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you align to your main gift and you do it in the order, like mm -hmm. I just said, from your first to your third, not your third to your first or your second to your third to your first, right? Like when you align to that, your frequency is very, very clear. And this, this is what brings the abundance because people are attracted to it. Right. So somebody could literally be operating their business from, you know, the, the wrong side up, right? They're not fully like aligned yet. And they're collecting a few different clients in here and there. But when they become totally aligned with their soul's gifts, one, two, three, uh, all those same people might very well totally just see them like for the very first time like and that's what i was just kind of like getting a visual of right mm. like, i'm sure that's mm. i'm sure that's what will happen for so many people as they become fully fully aligned um 
I'm glad you said that because I never thought about it in that way, but that is absolutely true. That's you, that's you being in an abundance magnet. Yeah, because all those people could still be there, right? And like in their circle or in their, say, their Facebook group or what have you. And until they become fully aligned, maybe those people can't get to them in a sense, right? So who knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and one more thing before we go, I just want to talk about, uh, and this is probably going to be the same answer again, but when people feel like their energy is sludgy, right? Opposed to them not being in a, a soul alignment, but just on a day to day, you know, sometimes you just feel crappy, right? What's a really good way that you like to like to share with others to help them just kind of like raise their vibration, uh, clear their energy, that kind of thing. Do you have like a, a tip or a trick or a activity that you use all the time? Oh, I have an easy one. <laughs> it's kind of what I do every day. Okay. Before I go to bed, I always lay down flat and you can do this 10 minutes, however long you want to do it, but you just lay down flat. You put your hands in your heart and you just be in your presence. Mm. And what you, what you find is when you're just sitting there with your hands on your heart, you have your eyes closed, and then you just, you know, bring your chin down and focus on the heart, the heart will tell you everything that's not aligned or is aligned to you. And usually the first thing is like, oh, I shouldn't have talked to that person or that person like when you feel down and like you can have a conversation with your heart basically. Or you could just sit there and don't do anything. The best thing to do when you feel sluggish is just to actually like be in your heart space, like be in your own presence, I call it, like be in your sacred space. And then if there's anything that doesn't feel right, like let's say you had a bad conversation with a client and you're like, oh, this person's driving me nuts. Then just go in there, okay, cut, disconnect. Okay, cut, disconnect from the collective and all this, these thought forms of people's stuff. Because if we don't disconnect before we go to bed, our dreams are like mm -hmm. you know, in our other state. We cannot actually sleep, you know, like recharge. Mm -hmm. so I literally just sit there and I just have a have self love moment. <laughs> I just be in my presence and I look at all the different things that is just not aligned to me. I get rid of it, cut the cords. Um, cut the cords from the collective of the earth, like everything I can think of. And then all I have left is just myself. Mm -hmm. and then that's when you can have that deeper conversation. You can ask questions. Um, well, how can I align more? Because you actually should ask a soul line question to yourself too. My question that is aligned to my soul is I ask, what is the best thing that's going to allow me to have more self-love? for myself because my energy is love. Yeah. If your energy is power. You would be asked like, what do I want? Because those that are power, they, they tend to not know what they want mm -hmm. and they get clear of all these possibilities. Right. If your energy is order, well, then how can I be more peaceful? Because my whole life is like chaotic. How can I be more in my order? Because that's where they find their perfection. Right. And then if they're in a creation, how can I be more creative? Mm -hmm. That's really, you know, going to allow me to create something beautiful, like out of nothing. Right. Right. So every gift of your main gift, ask that question. And then that question is going to like give you so much more insight that you need to do to make changes the next day. I'm telling you, like, if you do this every night, like you cannot be tired because <laughs> you're going to get so much energy from source. You're going to get so much clarity in 10 minutes. It, well, because, I mean, the only thing that really matters is you in that very, very moment, right? I, I remember hearing a quote so long ago, and it's like, the meaning of life, maybe the meaning of life is just being present in this moment, right? And it's just like so simple. But as you were talking, <laughs> I just thought of something else, something that's probably going to be so beneficial for some people to hear, and probably also going to hurt some people's feelings. But I'm going to say it, because <laughs> I'm blunt. But um with this soul alignment path, right? Like we have been talking about this whole conversation. There's so many people that have gone into coaching or mentoring, right? And then they're like, it's working for some people. Why isn't it working for me or whatever, right? And it's like, it's not your one, two, three, <laughs> right? And you probably, you know, you probably get a lot of coaches and mentors, you know, 
uh, in that sense, coming to you and asking for their one, two, three, right? And you're like, it's not right. Like, it, just because other people are doing it and succeeding at it doesn't mean it's going to be your most abundant, right? And that's going to suck for a lot of people to hear and just kind of like resonate with. But, you know, I mean, just because you enjoy um, setting things up for people and order and that kind of thing doesn't mean that you necessarily you know, need to become a VA, right? Because you have a VA friend that's making a lot of money, right? There is a path for you that is going to be just like the puzzle pieces are just going to fit together, right? So. Yes. I love you said that because that's so true. This is why, that's gift envy, by the way. <laughs> this is the number one sabotage to your soul. If you start aligning to somebody else's gifts, it's going to cause chaos. This is also how you know, like chaos, like everything in your life and business, like getting bills and people like not liking what you do and like um, all, all of those things are going to come into fruition because it's just not aligned to you. Right. So the more you do that, the more chaos happens. The more you get into soul alignment, the more you get aligned to that main gift, like I said, you're going to see more abundance, more, more clients, more you know, money flowing, more better relationships, better connections. Like everything will start to feel really, really good. And that's what I consider the flow, right? But you cannot feel that until you take action towards the one thing that is the most natural thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that the most natural thing was to be loved because I thought, oh, I got to like give people experiences with my body, right? Because I was creation. And then when I stopped doing that and it just, just started talking from like what we're talking about right now, like my original content comes through. Mm -hmm. the, the, the difference is like you feel super creative and it's so amazing information. And people are just like, wait, where did she get that from? Like, that's how you know, like, it's aligned to you. But if you're doing stuff that is somebody else's gift, you don't have the same capacity of content coming through. Mm -hmm. you know, like, you're doing it in your head, right? Like, okay, I'm going to be a VA because it sounds good and people are doing good. I know how to do things in order. But then you're like, wait, I, I'm not sure how to express that. Yeah. And if you have those thoughts, then usually means it's not really aligned to you. It's maybe a part of your second or third gift, right? Yeah. But when you do the main one, it's like, man, your content is just flowing. You can't stop talking about it. Right. Which probably in a sense, like if, if someone became a VA because they like to organize stuff, but say their number one was love, right? Which in a sense doesn't really make sense. Like when you first say it, and I'm sure that you get a lot of people, they're like, okay, like, what do I do with that now? <laughs> but um, like in that sense, like just say that that was like a hypothetical person. What would you like suggest to them if, if, if that's something that they love to do is be a VA and organize stuff, but their, their number one essence was love. Oh, okay. Then that would be the opposite, right? If it was order first and then the end product was love, then, then, then that would make sense. But if it was love, that means that they actually need to create more sacred space for people. Mm. Like the, the main point of what they do is they heal. They help them to connect with the pain and the soul and then they put that first and then they can add the extra stuff which is they can put the order maybe that's the technicality of their like creating a website so necessarily well. yeah necessarily they don't have to switch careers they just have to operate it from a totally different focus yes that's what i mean it's like you have to change the perspective of how you speak and how you show up yeah. When I showed up as divine love and not creation, I was like, oh, I'm not really talking a lot about business. I'm talking about the soul. So mm -hmm. let me talk about the soul and to the pain of what it is. <laughs> and then when I did that, I was like, oh, this is how it feels like because it, it's just so much good content. But when I said, oh, you can set up your marketing and your business plan and all blah, blah, blah. That was like, I have so much information, but like, I don't feel good in it. Right. Well, it's, it's such an interesting um, idea, and I'm actually really interested to see what I will get because my whole life and my whole, I feel like my whole being has been totally like, just like creativity, like creative, like that's my word, right? But maybe that's not my number one. Well, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> right? Anyway, 
this has been a super awesome conversation. I know that a lot of people are going to have some like aha moments from this. So I thank you so much for allowing uh, this time that we had for this convo. And uh, where can people find you? Oh, w one thing that I want to offer um, to everyone is that actually I created a quiz. It's called um, Divine Business Gifts Quiz. And it's literally what you just said. I have been able to type three kinds of types, which will kind of narrow down what your values are, who you are at soul level, uh, where do you find peace of mind, um, your niche, you know, how you can mon start monetizing your gifts. And so it's right on my website, naomikiliikuli.com, so just my name, .com. Okay, I'll put that in the... Yeah, <laughs> and when you take the quiz, you're going to be able to see what's your... your your primary and your secondary. Mm -hmm. and that's just going to give you an idea. And then when I look in your Akashic records, I can actually pinpoint which one it is. Because like I said, we have like eight kinds. Right. So it actually tells you, the eight kinds tells you what your business model is, your business marketing archetype, like how, which means like how to create your business aligned to your soul, like the business model. I also can give you your power words, what your, soul, what your marketing soul words is. I channel the words. And like all of those things, like you first need to know the main primary one. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you start taking action towards that one, that, that one type. And once you start doing that, you're going to see things start to shift really quickly. If only we all had this information like right out of high school, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, would have, we would have been probably on, the, on a better path for, for a long, long time. But I mean, everything happens at the right time. And also, you know, we all have our own journey, right? So um, take, um, take the quiz and see what you get. And I'd love for you guys to comment and let us know, like if you had like an aha moment or if you were like shocked or what have you, I, I want to know people's responses. But um, anyway, thank you so much for watching everybody. And I hope this was awesome for you. Let me know if it really resonated and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you all again soon. And thank you so much. Um, for being here with us. No, thank you. Bye. Bye.